All right, good day, everybody. We're changing it up right now. As you can see, we got the JK back in the garage. We got kind of a major project I need to take care of. If you guys remember when I first bought the JK, it was a mechanic special that I picked up from Cochran Dodge. And when I was doing the services on changing the transfer case oil, you remember that when I dumped the oil, it was full of a bunch of metal filings. I got a rebuild kit for the transfer case. We're going to pull the transfer case out, start the rebuild, but there's one big problem that I got to take care of first before I can get the transfer case out. Now underneath, if you guys remember when I was trying to do the transfer case service, this bolt was seized. Not seized as it won't come out, it just spins freely because the nut or whatever on the other side, so I got to take care of this. Now there's many options that you can do. I don't want to really start grinding and I don't really want to start getting the plasma cutter out because obviously this is the fuel tank. But I have a method that I'm going to try, but I want to know what you guys will do in this situation. Leave a comment below. All right, so what I determined from the other camera, we got one of those long nut things. And the problem with that is, is that it seizes up. The whole thread apart could get seized up. So there's one trick I'm going to try before I'm going to go to the other trick that I'm going to do. I think it broke. Yeah, it broke. Stick that in there. Couple threads to hold it. That way now, when I remove this, it's not gonna come crashing down. Now I'm going to drop my front dry shaft. Great. Those two bolts are out. Now if we want to rotate the drive shaft, even though I got the transfer case in neutral, I can't rotate it, so all I gotta do is jack up one tire, and then I will be able to spin the drive shaft around. Okay, I got the tire able to spin. And then with the tire up, rotate it back around. So now I'm just gonna take it, and then Lower it back down. Same thing. Now that I got rotated over. Gonna remove the bolts. Get the drive shaft off the front. I think that's gonna come right out. There we go. Well, the rear or the front drive shaft is off. It uh, feels like it needs some grease, but they're non-greasable joints. So I'm gonna have to get creative there. Now the drive shaft can be ready to be tapped out. I'm going to say while things are going along smoothly, I have encountered a few things already that uh, I was kind of hoping I would avoid, so to speak. So the first thing we're looking at is the ARB skid pan. You know how much I hate 
removing that because how heavy it is. And the reason why I'm not very happy, because in order to get the transfer case out, there's a bolt that's right underneath there and transmission mounts in the way. And the only way to get her out and maybe reach some of the bolts at the top is to remove the skid plate or the cross member, I should say, and lower it down a little bit and set it up on blocks. That being said, I really didn't want to remove that ARB skid pan. That's such a pain in the butt. Couple extra steps. I gotta think about how am I gonna do something with that? Am I gonna be able to grease that? Am I hooped? What's the situation there? I need to try to figure out something. Before I get underneath and tackle that ARB skid pan, which I hate so much, picked up a few things. My tire chains came in. They'll fit my TJ when I go to 35s. And they'll fit my JK's a bag of chains. And of course, every time I stopped, I always pick up some slings. They're always good keeping your toolbox. You're not going to use these for towing or trying to do some recovery because that's not what they're designed for. But I really like these, these ones right here. I call them a banana sling. They're actually like a big, huge loop. And then for pulling chains, or for pulling trees out of the woods, I picked up this chain that I could wrap around and I could use a sling to pull a tree out of the bush if I need to put firewood or whatever. Yeah, I'm not overly happy, but I gotta remove it so I can remove the transmission cross member because I need to jack up the transmission and everything else in order to get the transfer case out. So I got it off. I'm gonna pull the drive shaft at the same time. Probably gonna end up rebuilding it. I tried the uh, 3 8 Milwaukee, but no go. But I was kind of thinking if the oil cooler was leaking, but I'm kind of leaning towards more of a rear main oil seal. Because I don't see. Well, it's hard to say if it's coming down, leaking down the top or not. I need to investigate more, but that transmission pan is held up good, really good. Ah, uh, so I need to get the big guns out. Ah, uh, that sucker is in there kind of tight. I'm left-handed, so as you can see, I almost, there we go, we tapped her out. It's a 10 mil, in case anybody's curious to know what size it is. Take the bucket up high first, so I know which way it's coming down. Drain all the oil out. So now this is where the fun begin. Where engineer Johnny has come back into play. This cross member has to come out, which is a real pain in the butt. And then there's another section too, because you just can't remove those two bolts right there because underneath the cross member, I'll try to get 
try to get in there. There's two more that you can access. So, let me turn the light back on. So I'm going to have to disconnect um, where the transfer case mount bolts to this cross member, drop it out, have it jacked up using that support right there, and then remove that bracket afterwards. Yes, yeah, complete crapshoot. So you can see right there, I just changed oil this spring when I first bought the Jeep and you can see all the metallic filing. That's crazy. Dump that into the recycle bin. See, more chunks of metal right down there. So here's just to get this up as you can see so I noticed that when I was bringing our jack the transfer case up there we go we're loose now there's actually three there's three so now I am completely free now Yeah, this is one stupid setup. Why well, they have a solid rod in there? I mean, that's just gonna create way more problems later on. So I'm gonna try to bust the nut off this side, and then I can hopefully pound the bolts through. We're gonna find out. Yep, I can see where this is going to be fun. I think that... Bolt is seized in there. I think... I think we might be good. Not seized. Just being a little difficult. I think we, uh, I think we have something happening here now. I think so. Got it to spin. I gotta try to get it out of there now. So I'm gonna use a pry bar and kind of pry on it and spin it. Oh, we're making some headway now. Starting to. All right, I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on there. Oh, yeah, look at all the rust on that one. Look at that, look at the threads. Yeah, I can tell you right there, they didn't budge at all. They did not budge at all. So going back to this. That's not supposed to happen. But. Try to. Try to Loosen it up a bit. Oh, so it's using combination of the big ratchet and this, I finally got 
the rust to break free so I can probably start. That's the last bolt. I got my gloves on so this mount should in theory here we go Thank God that is out. I didn't think it was going to come out. Engineer Johnny strikes again. Stupid design. I understand having a solid pin through there for strength, but... Like, how could you build something like this and not think about those long bolts corroding inside there and not be able to get them out? Like, seriously. Yeah, this is where I don't get the stupidity... When engineers design something, so I got to remove the cross member. There's no need for that. If they would have designed the mount, that you could get the nut off from the bottom of the transfer case. So now, to get the nut off the bottom of the transfer case, I also have to remove the isolator mount as well. Then once that is off, then I can access all the bolts. Or nuts, I should say. Isn't that stupid? All that work just to remove that one nut. All right, this one here is coming out. All right. It's really hard to try to get some video footage, but this one up here is coming. Problem is that whole stud is coming with it which is not ideally what I want it to happen but well, that one's out gonna try to free that nut up afterwards I saved the two hardest ones for last that one's pretty easy but there's this one here and the one for the bracket one up top but without this special wrench it's got a it has a socket basically on the end so I'm able to get in there I don't know how the heck you do that one I'm going to tell you guys right now that one there really sucks because the cable's in the way and I don't want to screw around with that because that's going to open up a can of worms, but, uh, yeah, what a nightmare. Now the fun begins. Brackets disconnected, electrical disconnected. I got a motorcycle jack. It's up as far as it'll go. I got one nut that's holding it in secure. And I'm hoping I can... Alright, we're going to try this again with a different camera. Because the ground is cold and batteries die pretty quick because even though the heater's going the cold's coming up off the cement floor so anyways everything's disconnected I'm gonna start pulling the last bolt out and then hopefully slide that transfer case down hopefully it'll clear the secondary gas tank we're gonna find out just pulling that last nut off. Come on. 
And I got one that's just kind of hanging on by thread. Let's see if I can. Problem is, it's probably just just hanging up, but it's probably doing it because it should just should just come out. Yeah, getting it back up is probably going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Holy, I'm not going to lie. That job friggin' sucked. There you have it. There's a good look of the coupler for the JK. Not much room to get those top two bolts. Especially with this bracket, and you don't want to fiddle around because you bust that plastic clip trying to get that cable out. Well, then you're up shit creek without a paddle. And then you got this electrical connection that's tied in with it. Oh, better camera view right here. And uh, that makes it a little hard to get at as well. But uh, yeah, there we are. She's out. She is friggin' out. Now that I got this turd on the shelf, another thing that I'm not surprised about is that with those splines, there's no evidence of any kind of spline lube or anything else that should have been put on it because I'm pretty sure some people probably suffered those season up. As you can tell, it's rusted pretty good. But this thing is taken apart. I'm not taken apart, it's taken out. It's on my bench. I can get ready to start to rebuild. But I got to be careful when I start taking it apart not to damage anything. Just in case the rebuild kit that I got, some of the seals are not compatible. Because I got the other transfer case from an older JK. Even though it looks the same, there's quite a bit of differences, especially with the um, input here. So, I'm going to have to check that out. I was surprised though is that a bunch of oil didn't come gushing out. So that means no seals are leaking, which is a good sign because on the TJ, it doesn't matter when you remove that transfer case, there's always oil that's puking out. But I think it's motherfucking beer time. I'm going to end this video here. Just because the struggle was real, Engineer Johnny came back to haunt me and it never ends. The shit show never ends. Motherfucking beer time, everybody. We're going to have some sneaky weasel. Bought this at an eight pack at my local store. It's actually pretty good. I don't mind this beer at all. Cheers, everybody. Oh, the struggle was real of that one there. From trying to remove the transmission cross member, why they designed it. That you had that straight pin go all the way across is a complete nightmare. I hate removing that ARB skid pan. That's another pain in the butt. And then fighting with those bolts on the transfer case because there's not a lot of room. I'm going to tell you that right now. There's not a lot of room to get your hand up there. Especially when you got big sausage fingers like mine. It makes a big difference. And you can't get the leverage off. A small wrench you need something a little longer to get the leverage to break them free when you live in an area like mine where you deal with salt and corrosion if you live down south where you don't see that they probably come off just nice but anyways cheers everybody oh.
burp. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And the next one, we're going to start tearing that apart. If you guys have never seen a Jeep JK transfer case torn apart, now's a good opportunity for you guys to see that happen. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody.